fine tuning with OpenAI is way more easy and simple than I thought and it allows me to create better content and I believe it can be very helpful for you guys if you're interested in creating better content for your social or blogs or even uh, cold emails. It's, as I said, it's even more simpler than I thought and today I'm going to share with you a process that will get you up and running. I'm guessing it might take you not less, not more than one hour to fine tune a model and have it already production ready. Let's cover quickly what is exactly fine tuning. So no point in me inventing stuff. We'll just read this from the open AI. Um, so basically fine tuning lets you get more out of models available for the API by providing higher quality results than if you would have been prompting. An ability to train on more examples that can fit in a prompt. It also saves token and it uh, basically is cheaper and you can basically get better results with cheaper models if you fine tune the model beforehand. Now the step for fine tuning is first of all, you need to prepare and upload the tra training data. Then you train the data and then you evaluate the results. And if you like them, you can just start working with the model. Now let's discuss when you should fine tune because very often you can just improve your output with better prompting. Prompting, when you prompt correctly, you can get faster results and the feedback loop is obviously shorter. So first of all, try to prompt better. And only if you can't get the results that you expected with prompting and you iterated on the prompts and you gave examples and you change and tweak the system message to make it better, only then you should consider fine tuning. Uh, OpenAI sh shares a common, some common use cases. So if you want to set the style, tone and format uh, of content, if you want to uh, improve reliability at producing a desired output, so if the output is very important and crucial, so you don't want to rely on your prompts, so you can train based on uh, training data in the specific structure of the output that you're expecting, and this will yield better output. Um, and also it is good for handling edge cases in specific ways, and also for performing a new skill or task that's hard to articulate in a prompt. One high level way to think about these cases is when it's easier to show, not tell. In the section, they, so they, they are elaborating a bit more stuff. Now let's move on to the implementation. So. In order to fine tune what you have to provide, you have to provide a JSON line file with the following structure. So it's going to look like this message, role system, you share the, the content of the system message, then you share the content of the user prompt, and then you share the content of the output. So an example, the system message is Marv is a factual chatbot that is also sarcastic. The user prompt is what's the capital of France? And the assistant is supposed to answer Paris as if everyone doesn't know that already. Now we have another prompt, another example, and this considers this as a, the training data. So again, the system message is Marv is a factual chatbot that is also sarcastic. The next message from the user the prompt is who wrote Romeo and Juliet and the response was oh just some guy named William Shakespeare ever heard of him so as you can see it's, it is sarcastic so basically you need to provide many examples at least you can provide 10 but OpenAI suggests at least 50 between 50 to 100 and once you provide these uh, examples you feed it into the OpenAI fine tuning uh, module, which I'll show you in a moment. And then after a while, you're going to get a fine tuned model. Now let's uh, cover how you can create um, this format. So obviously the format is, as I said, JSON-L 
And what I found here is a very cool website, which is free to use. It is called AI Fine Tune Dataset Ed Editor. Basically what it allows you to do, you can create a system message. Then you create the user message, which is the prompt. And then you create the answer, the response that you're expecting. And based on this, you're going to train the model. So for example, I already, what I did is I scraped many posts of a LinkedIn influencer that I like his copywriting style. And you can do this using the data scraper, which is a free Chrome extension. Basically, I, you can come here, let's say this is my profile and I want to scrape all the data. Uh, specifically, the data scraper doesn't work on LinkedIn, so you need to scrape this um, in a different way. Use Selenium Base, which I covered a few uh, videos ago, or use Power Automate, or you can just copy and paste whatever you feel like. If you don't want to scrape, you can also create your own content. So as I said, you write the system message, which is generally speaking, the, the guideline for the model. Then the user message is a specific prompt. And then you write the response. So you create at least 50 like this. I, I basically, OpenAI suggests at least 50. And then what you can do is you save everything and you will have over here all the sets. So this is a set. This is another set. And what I did, as I mentioned, is I took the top performing post of an influencer. And as you can see, the system message is always generate a LinkedIn post that received X likes and X comments. And the user message is what should be the post about. And the system message, the response is the actual post that was written by this influencer. Here's another example, generate a LinkedIn post that received X likes and Y comments, what should the post be about? And this is the post. And you can see it, ha it has a very specific style of writing his post. And I want to, um, I want GPT or GPT to create posts for me with a similar style. Here's another example, generate a LinkedIn post and here's with the X likes and Y comments, what should the post be about and the assistant message. So as you can see, I created 100 like this. I basically uh, coded it. And then you download the JSON-L file. And this is the JSON-L file. As you can see, it is ready over here. We have the system message, generate a LinkedIn post. We have the user message, what should the post be about, and the assistant content, which is basically what the post is about. Now, the next step, let's see that I've covered everything. So create a JSON. I will leave this tool in the, uh, in the video description. Basically, as I said, it is really helpful. You can also import existing JSONs or CSVs or or Excel, so you can also create an Excel file with the system message, the user prompt and the output, and then import it and you will have this ready and just download the JSON and it's going to adjust so you will be able to fit it to the fine tuning um, module in OpenAI. So after creating this JSON line file, next step would be coming here, fine tuning, what you do, you hit the create, you choose a base model. Let's say you want to choose GPT 3.5 and then you upload the JSON file, JSON line file. So let's say this was the file that I want to um, uh, import or upload. So formatted top post for fine tuning. Then I upload and select and you can choose if you want to add validation data or not. For the sake of simplicity, don't add validation data for the first cycle. Afterwards, I do suggest uh, uploading validation data because it will probably yield better results. But assuming that you don't want to upload validation data because you just want to test this out, you hit the upload button, you hit the create, and it is going to start creating. You will see over here, this is the screen that you're expecting to see. You will see a, a few graphs and models. 
uh, a few uh, graphs and lines and it will update you here via the log. This took me approximately 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, uh, I got a message that the training was completed and I also got an email. And the next step is actually testing the model which can be done in the playground. So I came here, you can go here to the playground uh, in the OpenAI platform backend and you can select whether or not you want to use one of the existing models or a fine-tuned model. So let's check this out. You... What we want to do here is write a LinkedIn post. What should the post be about? And this is an example with GPT 3.5 that I didn't train on. It will probably yield something with like emojis and, and stupid stuff that I can't use. So the, it actually answered the post. Okay. The post could be about trending topic in your industry, a thought provoking question, a major accomplishment or milestone, a relevant new update, etc. Now maybe Let's see what it does when we use GPT-4. Exciting news to share. After months of dedication and hard work, I am beyond thrilled to announce that I am launching my first ever entrepreneurial venture, TechQuest. I have no idea what he is talking about. <laughs> he did share some hashtags and a note. Now let's check the fine-tuned model and I'm expecting to see uh, a great post with this with similar format to what uh, the influencers that I've used in my training data would write, which is uh, short lines and to the point. Let's see. There you go. This is amazing. I love it. Business is simple, but it isn't easy. 99% of people think they are failing at business, but they miss the mark. They allocate the resources needed to get results, but they are investing in the wrong spots. Here is a simple way to think about business that has nothing to do with the workload. Define the problem you solve. Reduce the friction in solving that problem. Communicate that you're doing one and two and above. above. Systems and processes come after you've nailed one, two, and three. If you get fancy before you have a successful business, you're simply making faster mistakes on the way to, to losing money. So is your business successful? If not, you're definitely missing one of these. I want to clap my hands. <laughs> this is really cool. Um, I obviously tested it before the video as well, but I'm happy that it yielded good output uh, when we are live, when we are streaming, because you know, sometimes uh, things fail when you're uh, trying to show and demonstrate the value. So in my opinion, this is amazing. This is very cool because basically my plan is to take um, more inspiration from people who write better copies than I do, perhaps even um, copywriting books, stuff like this, and feed it into the platform, create the training data, and then uh, fine tune the model to create better post with these prompts. Basically what I'm hoping to be able to do is that I will be able to have better uh, output, which is more aligned with what I'm trying to achieve. So let's say I want to write better Facebook posts so I can look for top performing posts or like copywriters that write amazing Facebook posts that are really grabbing attention. And I can train the model, fine tune the model based on those examples. And then I can start posting uh, automatically, obviously, start posting automated posts in Facebook or in my feed based using the, the trained data, the fine tuned data. And I'm hoping it will have the same structure and the same uh, flair and the same, uh, like, would be witty and persuasive as uh, my role models. I have many more ideas regarding how to leverage this. So uh, for sales calls, 
בטר פייסבוק אז, בטר קולד אאוטריש די אמס, בטר קריאשן אוף בלוג פוסט, אני חושב שזה יכול להיות מאוד אימפקטפול אם אנחנו נגיד לטופ פרפורמינג בלוגרס ואנליז the way that they are creating um, content. For example, we can go to Ahref and sort by the largest amount of backlinks and take the top performing blogs that they have and use uh, those blogs um, as training data and then fine tune um, based on the data and then generate posts based on uh, this inspiration. I think it could be very useful. Um, obviously there are a few more um, benefits for using the fine-tuned model in opposing to just iterating on on better prompts but um, I mentioned most of them here when we cover the documentation obviously here you have more instructions regarding how to train how to use the validation layer uh, how to test the fine-tuned model and uh, the output and But I don't want to cover this in this video. Um, for today, I think it, this is enough. I highly recommend that you guys start playing around with fine tuning. I know that I overlooked this um, for a while, and I was probably mistaken. I wouldn't say mistaken, but it was, it, it was probably something that I kind of feared because I thought that the process is tedious and long. But now that I started messing around with the fine-tuning process, I see how valuable it is and I see that it is actually very easy and very simple. So I highly recommend that you guys do this as well. That's it, I guess. If you have any questions, any comments, any feedback for improving, please leave them in the comment section below. I would obviously appreciate if you can share this video and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And... Until next time, keep on automating.